uh, take your Bible and turn to the last chapter of the Bible. And I'm not talking about the, the indexes or the maps. I'm talking about Revelation chapter 22. Tonight ends a 27-week study. Again, if you've missed it, go to YouTube. You can watch it just like the people who are going to watch this. Um, and so... Last week we covered, you know, here's, you know, here's, here's what believers get. You know, here's what it's going to look like, and, or at least symbolically. There's a lot of symbol, and sometimes you're wondering, are they doing, talking literal now, or is this symbolic, like the big giant cube uh, that everybody gets to live in, or is that symbolic for the, we're all living in the Holy of Holies, uh, and there's plenty of room uh, for people. So, again, those are, those are, um, you know, some of the difficulties when you go through the book of Revelation is is everything does have an interpretation, uh, but it is it isn't all figurative. It's it's speaking to some truths um, uh, that that will flesh out. And so um, we looked at all that. And so um, let me let me begin with this question: What if you could put your hand and I, so? On a newspaper slash whatever. Um, that's from the future. How many remember the second movie of Back to the Future? That's the one where he goes forward in time and they find... He, he gets a, his hands on a, 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 a sports magazine that tells all the winners for the last X number of years. Um, and then he goes it back, and then the, the, the young Biff, the bad guy, whatever, he gets it, and he's able to, you know, do all this other stuff. But, but imagine seeing a newspaper, not just any newspaper, the newspaper that has your obituary. I think that'd be a wake-up call. So you're not talking away in the future for someone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I used to tell this word the first thing I looked at the obituary. I said, if I ever see my name in here, I'm going back to the house. What do you, what would you like it to say? I wouldn't want to see the date because one, I just wouldn't be careful until then. <laughs> and definitely don't say how or all that, but, but more about the obituary talks about this person did this and that and all, you know, and, and stuff like that, you know, just to see what, it, do you think knowing the future would impact how you live today? I think it would, especially on that death day. I'll be going, what's going on? Anyway, but, but just to say, hey, this is it. Or even if possibly change the future. But this is in the future and all this other stuff. Now, there are certain things that aren't going into the future per se. But there's things that we do need to live in light of the future. Who here wants to go into debt? I'm looking over Mike because he's a fellow parent of a college student. <laughs> Went, and a daughter that got married. And <laughs> anyway, but, but who here wants to go into to debt? And, and see, if you're going, no, I don't want that in my future, then when do you need to make decisions? Today. Buy today. Pay for it tomorrow. And as they say, tomorrow never comes. But it does with interest. I'm going to 
Well, let's see far enough when I'm 80 and old. <laughs> <laughs> how about... It was beyond that death date. <laughs> how, about, how about decisions? In the future, do you want to be more healthy? So when do you need to make decisions about that? 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can't do that. So it starts with today and making decisions. But, but here's the thing. Eating right today really doesn't affect you today. But over time, it, 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 you get there. It, it, it starts to come off. It starts to strengthen, whatever, whatever that goal is. Um, I used to tell myself, and I'm having to tell myself again, nothing feels, no, say, nothing tastes as good as thin feels. To all that a little bit. All right. You know, and just like, ah, I might want to eat it. Ah, but it really, and there have been some times it's worn out. No, this will taste better. But anyway, um, what is the immediate, what is the immediate effect of exercise? It's tired. Tired. Boredom. Pain, even. I mean, sore and all that. Who wants to go through that? But long term. So again, looking at the future, what do you have to do today? And so we have looked through, we've looked at the future better than any, well, I'll be healthy if I do this, this, and this, or I can read the obituary from X number of years from now and see what, we have something that's even more sure. Um, Let's go to verse 6. The angel, uh, chapter 22, the angel said to me, and this is after everything is seen, and everything, the angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets. And, and what that means is, is, you know, did all the prophets get it all right? I mean, when they spoke in the power of the Lord? Yeah, I mean, they spoke about things in the future, and they all came to pass. Except for, for our, our perspective, there's still certain things that have yet to come to pass, but they will come to pass. And so the God who gave them the future, and it was 100% right, it is the same one given, given this. So the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants all the things that must soon take place. Here's about the message of the revelation. It is certain. It's trustworthy. You can trust it. Any doubt, it's true. There's no falsehood in it. And where is this from? It's from God, and He never lies. It's certain. But then verse 7, Behold, I'm coming soon. It's certain and it's urgent. The word coming soon, and some translations have the word quickly. Um, um, it just means once it begins, it's going to start real quick. Uh, it's going to happen suddenly. It's going to happen swiftly. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're going, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, how many, how many times have people read the book of Revelation going, oh, it could start next week. It could start, you know, and oh, and then a hundred years goes by. <laughs> you know, and then there's a, there is going to be one group of people and we, we might be it. And I think we're supposed to have this anticipation of going, oh, and I see what's going on in this world and oh, I can see it. And, oh, you know, so, you know, you know, so I think there's supposed to be this urgency about what's said in this book. And since it's reliable and it's urgent, blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. I put the very beginning of Revelation there on your sheet, which is Revelation 1-3. 
which it's, it starts with a blessing and ends with a blessing. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. And so since it's reliable, since it's urgent, then we need to heed. We need to, to, to you know, go. So therefore we need to live in light of the end. Um, I just repeated the, the, the title. We need to live knowing that there's going to be future persecution. We need to live knowing there will be future disasters. We need to, to live knowing there is going to be a future punishment. And knowing that there's going to be a future reward. All the things that have been said. The good, the really, really, really good, as well as the really, really, really bad, should impact. And so, so how do we live? Here's just a couple general things, and then I'll get specifics. Don't get sidetracked. Even John got sidetracked. Uh, it, it says, verse, verse 8, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And, and when I heard and, and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. He's already made this mistake once. <laughs> Okay, anybody ever make a mistake twice? Okay, all right, yeah. Um, you know, and, and but he said, do not do it. I'm a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, the prophets, and all who keep the words of this book. Worship God. This isn't about me. This isn't about predicting all the details and figuring it out and getting a nice timeline of what's going to happen when. Don't get sidetracked. And then also, don't put it off. Whatever, in light of the future, I really should do this, needs to begin today. Verse 10, he told me, then he told me, do not seal up the words of this prophecy, of this book, because the time is near. Then there's a really confusing verse here. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Sounds like you're encouraging, you know. Uh, let him who's vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. And you're going, are you encouraging people to stay bad? Well, look at the verse beneath that. And this is, this is a parallel. What, what he writes here is, is what Daniel wrote, ex except there's a big change at the beginning. Ver verse 9 says, He replied, Go your way, Daniel, because the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. So what he was revealed is saying, I'm sorry, you're not going to see it and you can't share it. Okay? But when it comes to John's time, he's like, don't seal it. Let it be known. Let it be known. And then look at, look at the words here. Many will be purified, made spotless, and refined. But the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise and understand. So looking at the context, parallel, parallel there is just like, he's not encouraging people to stay wicked. He's just saying, those who are wicked in heart and all, they're going to continue. Unless there's a change of heart. And, and can, can Christ change a heart? Yes. Uh, and, and so, but you know what? When you make decisions, you're setting the course. And so again, that's why there's an urgency. Don't get sidetracked. Don't put it off. Now, all the rest of this is live with, okay? What does it mean to live with in light of the end? Live Thank you. Thank you. I'm back. Okay. Live with the judgment in mind. That yes, there will be a day when all the 
things that are done, even for believers. Now, we will still be saved, but it's about reward and the lack of reward. Um, it says in verse 12, Behold. And the word behold. Yeah, that sounds like, Ooh, behold. You know, it means, looky here. I had, a, I had a Hebrew teacher tell me, behold means, looky here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, um, Dr. Bravin. Okay. I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to everyone according to what he has done. And again, it just recently went through the judgment and this is what the people who don't turn to the Lord and here's for the people who do turn to the Lord and what they get. And so live with the judgment in mind. Okay, do I really want to stand before God with this? Now, any great verses like 1 John 1, 9, uh, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, that's his grace. That's his grace. But it even says for believers in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it talks about that, that it's like our works are, are made of the either wood, hay, stubble, or the precious stones and precious metals. And it's all going to be tested through fire. And, I, and, and so, so live with the thought, I want to stand before you, Jesus. And you're going to be the judge. Live in light of that. Live with Jesus in mind. Verse 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and and the end. And I know it kind of says the same things three different ways, but, but here's, here's some of the difference. Alpha and omega, that is the A to Z. I mean, in the Greek, Greek uh, alphabet. And basically, Jesus is everything from A to Z. Now, I'm not bad things and stuff, but, but, um, but just saying what he is what you need from A to Z. The first... And last, and he's actually before the first, but, 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 uh, but he is always... He's, he's everything. He's always the beginning. He's the source of all. And the end. He's the goal of all. And so if you keep remembering that Jesus, you are all that I need. And Jesus, you are always. So nothing surprises you. Nothing takes you, you know, where oh, I don't know what to do now and all that. And you are the, the source of my life as well as the goal of my life. Live with Jesus in mind. Skipping down to verse 16. Um, and I just did this because he's still talking. Here's another title he gives uh, for himself. Um, Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. And then he says this, I am the root and the offspring of David. And so here's David. And I can understand the offspring of David because Jesus was, was born from David, but he's the root of David, meaning he preceded David. So, so he is the source of the promise that God gave to David to say one day, one of your descendants is going to be on the throne forever and ever and ever and ever, and that's going to be Jesus. And so he is also the fulfillment of the promise. And the bright morning star. I've never quantified this or looked it up to know, but, but I've been told, and so have you, that the night is the darkest just before dawn. I don't know if that's true. It might just seem that way or something, but but right now, this time of year, I, I get up and the sun is nowhere to be seen. Um, but at certain, at the right time, there's Venus. And it lets you know because Venus is, is closer, is closer to the sun, and so it's always going to be near the sunrise or the sunset. You know, it's always going to be associated. And so when people saw Venus rise, they are like, the dawn is coming. 
Jesus is the hope during darkness. Because guess what? Until the end of the book of Revelation, there's going to be a lot of dark times. Even today. So live with Jesus in mind. Live with judgment in mind. Live with Jesus in mind. Live, and here's the big word, with sanctification in mind. Sanctification is the process where the Holy Spirit makes us like Jesus. It's not works salvation, but a result of salvation. Verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Now, something that doesn't translate very well, it would be better translated, blessed are those who are washing their robes. It is a continuous action. Remember when Jesus washed the disciples' feet and he got to Peter and Peter initially refused and then Jesus says, this has to be done. And, and then he says, well, then wash all of me. And he's like, no, only you are clean. But we walk in this world and making sure that we're clean from this world. Um, 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 don't let this world stain you. And then it says this. Um, outside are the dogs. And that was just a term for Gentiles, but in the context here, it's a term for just non-believers. Those who practice, and it lists a few of the sins. Those who practice magic arts and the sexually immoral and the murderers and the idolaters and everyone who loves and practice falsehood. Now, John is writing this to people in the first century who are living in the world and, and you know, feeling tainted by the world and all this sin is going on around them and stuff like that. And it's more of a promise than, because I remember when I read this, I was going, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. So only if we're in the city, we're not going to be around this stuff. But, but it's, it's, it's just going to the promise that when this comes to fruition, there's not going to be this other stuff. Because where are the idolaters and the sexual immoral and those who practice magic arts? Where are they going to be? Well, just a chapter ago, they're all thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, so it's not like there's going to be, only if you're in this big giant cube that was described earlier, um, are, you, are you away from this? So, um, so live with sanctification. God, as I walk through this day, the things that maybe my mind thought of or things that, that my eyes saw or are things that I heard, God, keep me pure. Keep me cleansed. Live with the lost in mind. Verse 17. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Here's the invitation. Come. Come to Christ. There's going to be judgment. There's going to be all the... Come to Christ. <clears throat> and it mentions the two. The Spirit, and who's the bride? The church, believers. The Spirit without the church is voiceless. Now, the Spirit, Jesus said, is going to come and convict the world of sin and judgment and righteousness. How are they going to hear unless somebody says something? And how will they say unless they are sent? The Spirit without the church is voiceless. The church without the Spirit is powerless. Yeah, go on. You try to witness to somebody in your own power. That's why it's the Spirit and the Bride come. And let him who hears say, 
come. If you've heard somebody say come and you came to Christ, if you've received the gospel, you are responsible to share the gospel. You heard the invitation, come. Now, since you've come, you also keep giving that invitation. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. Whoever wishes, let him take from the free gift of the water of life. Live with the word in mind, the scriptures. Verse 18, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share of the tree of life and the holy city, which are described in this book. Now, there's some other verses that talk about miss saying the word. <laughs> uh, I put them down there. Galatians 1, 8. But, if, but, if, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. You change the gospel. And listen, the gospel has changed. No, it hasn't. But it's coming out differently. It's changed to a health wealth thing. You just pray this little prayer and your rest of your life's going to be great. You're going to get rich and have a nice house just like the past. Anyway, so... Um, Anyway, so um, it, it, it's out there. Or, or you, you have some that are just saying about works, you know, that you just got to work harder and all this other stuff. And if you're not doing this and you're going to, you know, no, no. The only thing you need to do is truly receive Christ as Savior. Um, and he's going to change you from the inside. If he's not working on changing you, then you do mean to make sure you really are saved. Um, Deuteronomy 4.12 back to Moses do not add to what I command you do not subtract from it but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you uh, Proverbs 35 through 6 every word of God is flawless he is a shield to those who take refuge in him do not add to his words or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar now let me share so, so, some, some get on it and, 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 you know, who might choose a certain translation over another. And they say, it's take, it, there's that little thing and it says, some manuscripts don't have this and all that. They're taken away from the Lord. Well, maybe you added it. Uh, anyway, I mean, it, it goes both ways. But I don't think that's what this is talking about at all. I mean, people who worked on the ESV and the NIV and the... King James and all that work with what they had to do their best to put before. Here's what we believe that from, from all the manuscripts and all that. Here's, here's what it says. And you know, it's interesting. It doesn't contradict or, or change even if there's slight words difference. But um, I don't think this is what it's talking about. This is talking about, I don't like what the Bible says about that. And we'll either ignore it or some just try to figure some gymnastics way of feel changing the interpretation to that's not. We just need to be careful that we stick to what the Word says. But I don't like what, I'm not going to go into details, but there's a lot of things that, that get me. <laughs> and I said, I wish that wasn't in there, but it's there. Don't distort it. <clears throat> Share it. And in the power of the Spirit, live it. And then, 
live with Jesus' return in mind. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I'm coming soon. It was so funny is, you know, 2,000 years later gone. We're still waiting. Anyway. <laughs> well, those kind of things prove us that I've had a big thing that proves in the our time. Yeah. Look, way of looking at time. Yeah, yeah, it isn't, as he says, you know, you know, I mean, it, God is timeless and all that. But it's also, again, that coming soon, that coming quickly is when it starts, it's, it's just going to go. And then you read from Second Peter and that talks about that the reason he hasn't come is because he's still waiting for some to come. Because once... Once Jesus comes, it's too late. And that's why he's patient. That's why he's waiting. But anyway, um, we'll get to that when we get to Second Peter. Um, to leave, live with Jesus' return, yes, I'm coming soon. And, okay, there are times in my life that I'm like, oh, Jesus, come. You know what those times are? When life is really not going well, <laughs> you know, just come now and stuff like that. But then, then I have a a little baby, and I want to watch that little baby grow up and 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 you know, grow up to be uh, a daughter and son and and let them you know. And there's a part of me and maybe grandkids one day. I mean, there's a part of me that still. Still, there's, and, and, and definitely, if they don't know the Lord yet, God, don't come. <laughs> don't come until. I believe the desire for the end will grow. The more we think about, it'll make us pray more. It might make us more careful what we say and what we do and don't do and, and look for opportunities to share and, and, and things like that. But, when John, who has seen the vision, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. There should still be a part of us that is hungry for his return. When I see evil called good and good called evil, come, Lord Jesus. When I see the futility of hoping in politicians and judges, <laughs> come, Lord Jesus. When I hear of and see the persecution of believers, come, Lord Jesus. When I hear of another school shooting today in Texas, Lord Jesus when I struggle with my sinfulness come Lord Jesus when I think about his reign and his reward come Lord Jesus when I think about no more sorrow or pain our separation, our death. Come, Lord Jesus. When I think of the glories of heaven, come, Lord Jesus. And the greatest thing when I see Jesus face to face, come. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. But until then, His grace is available today. The last verse, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. You have revealed, and God, in some ways, I think you revealed in a way so that 
we won't fully understand what's happening until it's happening, but, but we do, we have a glimpse of what it's going to be like. And at the end, we win. We who are believers, we win. And it's going to be so awesome forever and ever and ever. So help us live today in light of what you've revealed to us. I pray in your name. Amen.